Hello everyone, my name is Laura and today I would like to talk to you about tourism aesthetics and in particular staff appearance. I would like to talk to you about what kind of things to consider when you're planning, the way you would like your staff to look like, uh, uniforms, personal hygiene and other things you have to take in consideration before you go and you order those uniforms. So let's get started. So. When we're talking about staff appearance, it's important to consider uniform aesthetics and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Also, we're going to talk about the functionality of your uniform and what you should consider when um, designing the appearance of your staff. We're going to talk a little bit about the uniform symbolism or what your uniform portrays uh, in the way it looks and what does it say about your brand uh, and establishment. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about personal hygiene as it is important um, uh, part as an extension of the uniform itself and at the end we're going to finish off the presentation with just a little bit of uh, best practices and examples of uh, things that are normally the, the norm and the standard for uniforms in tourism establishment. So let's carry on. Uniform aesthetics. Um, when you're thinking about uniform aesthetics, it's good to start with thinking about the style of the uniform. What style you would like uniform to be? That being elegant or casual, uh, maybe formal, or if you have a themed restaurant and you want your uniform to kind of continue that um, idea and philosophy behind the brand. So let's say that you have a fine dining restaurant. Uh, maybe then you would like your uniform to be elegant and maybe even to the edge of formal or a little bit more classic. While well, if you have like a really hip and interesting and cool place that is, for example, targeting young people or millennials, then maybe you would like a little bit more modern, maybe hipster um, style of the uniform. And this is something, there is no one size fits all situation, but it is a very important thing to to, to think of before you even start planning and designing. Um, the other thing that you have to think of is the color scheme. So um, there are basically two ways you can go now when it comes to colors. You can either go with colors that are fitting the brand or interior of your concept. Um, that can go uh, from one extreme where the whole uniform is within the, color, within the colors of the brand or you can go towards having accents uh, such as maybe a um, lapel or a tie that is within this color or maybe a belt or then just have the little pop of, of colors um, that, you, that, that fit your brand or the interior um, as accessories uh, throughout the uniform. This is a very, very popular um, way of doing it. The other direction you can go is um, uh, to just use basic colors such as black, white, maybe gray, different shades of uh, dark blue, etc. Um, this is probably suitable if you have like a very, very formal establishment or if you have such a, an amazing interior um, and aesthetics that you do not want the uniform of your personnel to take away um, the attention of the guests throw uh, from the, the the rest of the environment so this is as way something to think of when you're in the planning stage and coming to uniform functionality i would say that you should always always think of the task that the personnel would like to, will be performing on daily basis when you're designing the uniform so just as an example if you if you have a chef let's say or um or uh, for example, a uh, um, housekeeper, um, it is good to think, for example, of the shoes, they have to be comfortable, heels will not be appropriate. Um, and on the other side, if you have like, let's say a receptionist or a front desk agent, maybe it's okay to put them, the girls on a little bit of a heel, the boys with ties, and um, as they won't be having um, uh, too much of uh, bending over, kneeling down, etc., and they have to look a little bit more um, formal maybe. Uh, so this is something that you have to consider um, as well um, as I said make it comfortable especially with those like really labor-intensive positions. Um, 
such as, as I said, a housekeeper, a chef, a server, um, even um, an engineer or some kind of a repair person function, make it comfortable just to make sure that if they have to move a lot around, they can do that comfortably. And it doesn't mean that you have to jeopardize style and looks for comfort, but uh, think about the materials and the fitting um, when, when, when thinking, so that when, when designing the uniform, so you can ensure they'll feel comfortable, comfortable in carrying it. Making it functional, by that I mean consider all the little additions that the uniform will need to be really, really functional. In that particular case, would um, um, you have to think of things such as pockets maybe in an apron or in trousers for waiters where they can put their bottle opener, um, pens, paper, etc. Uh, maybe for a repair person to keep like pens and, 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 and small things, maybe a breast pocket um, on the overall. Uh, for the chef, uh, the little side pocket where they put their pens and their tasting spoon and things like this. Just think of everything uh, such as pockets and strings and maybe uh, bands and stuff that would make it really functional and easy to use. So, um, and as well, make it look good. I know that's maybe part of the aesthetics and not the functionality, but I truly believe that if the your staff looks good and they will feel good in, in their uniform and then it will be truly functional. So to me, making it look good is always uh, something very, very important. Uniform symbolism. Um, when we talk about uh, uniform symbolism, it is good to um, think of what your uniform would say about your establishment. And in order to think of that, um, try to take out the, the design of your, one, one it's, once when it's ready, uh, take the design and show it to people and say, what do you think uh, this uniform, what do you think about this uniform? What kind of an establishment do you think that fits in? And get a little bit of a um, opinion from people. So here I'm going to show you um, a couple of uniforms from different um, restaurant establishment and I would like to think when you see the picture of what's the first thing that comes uh, comes to your mind and what is your perception of this establishment. So um, the first one, yeah the first one is is a uniform from the American concept Hooters where Apparently, you need really, really big bosoms to work there. So, um, clearly, sex appeal is something very important, and I think this is portrayed extremely well in those particular uniforms. The second picture is from an anime manga themed restaurant from Korea. As you can see, it's very cute, it's very uh, kawaii. It's very, um, it's very, very um, kind of uh, Asian looking and it's sweet. And I think it very, very well uh, portrays the concept behind the restaurant. Um, I put this picture because I think it's really funny. And uh, I mean, look at how miserable this guy looks. Um, so coming back to my idea that it's important your staff to look good so they feel good and they can serve your guests properly. I think it's a very good um, example of how not to do it. See, um, maybe it fits a themed restaurant or something, but I really don't think that putting grown up people in cartoonish uh, um, clothing it's a good idea. As it, from my personal experience, it never ends well. And here we have a picture of a hospital themed restaurant in Germany where, um, as you can see, the staff is dressed like nurses and I think the symbolism that um, these particular uniforms carry very, very well portray the concept behind the restaurant. Um, a little bit about personal hygiene. When you consider uh, the overall look and appearance of your staff, you have to take personal hygiene in consideration. And most importantly, the hair, makeup and facial hair. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the best practices in world standards on those a little bit later on in the presentation. Nails, of course, uh, shoes, um, overall cleanliness of the uniform is important. Here, I would like to add that um, when you're designing your uniform, it's good to think of fabrics and materials that are easy to maintain, easily washable, and easily 
easy to iron. So uh, you actually make it as easy as possible for your staff to actually maintain their uniform in, um, in a good condition for a longer time. Poor hygiene practices can lead to complaints, uh, making people ill in the sense of food poisoning, loss of business and possible closure of the establishment, fines and even to the extent of civil and legal actions. While good hygiene practices can ensure, of course, you're satisfied customers, um, good reputation of your brand and establishment, good working conditions for your staff and less wastage, believe it or not. Of course, that would ensure legal compliance and it will also help to increase the productivity of your business. So now we're going to talk a little bit about uniform best practices uh, and standards. I just want to say very quickly that this is not one size fits all recommendation and you should always think about what the brand that you're trying to portray is about. Um, so I will talk a little bit about a little bit maybe more traditional and luxury establishment standards and of course those can vary a lot between um, uh, between brands and concepts. So let's start with hair. I would say that um, it's a generally good idea all hair that is touching the shoulders to be tied back. Why is that? First, um, it can lead to hairs falling either in the room uh, or God forbid in the food and it's just not hygienic and it's not it's a it's a terrible practice. So I would say that um, it's always a good idea the hair to be back to be tied back either in a pony or a rat tail or best in a bun. That's to me is the most hygienic way of keeping the show, the, the hair away from the staff's face. Um, and I'll say that even if the hair is shorter than shoulder length, it is a good idea to pin it back and clip it, um, clip it back from the face. And the easy test to do if that is needed is to ask your staff to bend, um, to, to kind of um, look down. And if the hair falls in their face, just ask them to use some clips or a hairband to, to put it away. Uh, I would say that all hair bands um, and clips and generally any hair accessory should be matching the color hair. So that will be black and brown for brunettes and kind of beige uh, and, um, and maybe light brown for uh, blondes. Uh, I would say again that um, it's always a good idea to use only plain hair accessories. So all this will ensure that the additional things that your staff puts on their hair and face um, and body will not really clash with the uniform and and the overall look that you have planned for your personnel. And coming to hairband, I would say that um, if you allow hairbands, uh, they should be no thicker than one centimeter, again, for the same reason, so it doesn't clash with the rest of the look. Um, in a sense of earrings and jewelry, I would say that it's always a good idea to allow only studs and not uh, bigger than one and a half centimeters in diameter, uh, and uh, and not to allow any hanging uh, earrings or loops, um, as they can be noisy and they normally are kind of a statement accessory. So again, we don't want to take away from the overall look of the of the uniform. Um, of course, it very much depends on your establishment, but generally, no earrings are allowed for male staff. Um, and no necklaces or any statement jewelry around the neck. Of course, you cannot stop people to wear uh, plain religious uh, jewelry, but it's a, it's a good idea to just ask them to cover it or put it underneath their uniform so it won't be seen and won't be taken in consideration from guests and other colleagues. As, uh, as you know, religious religion is a very sensitive manner, so it's probably a good idea that to be as subtle as possible. Um, in, in terms of watches, um, I would always say keep it plain and, um, and as small and as classic as possible. And normally I would not allow my staff to, care, to, to wear any additional armbands or bla bracelets, especially the, the one that make noises and cling, as it's, uh, I think it's a really, really uh, bad taste. 
Um, of course, wedding rings are uh, almost always allowed and as well uh, you can allow um, an engagement ring if your staff would like to wear one. Um, in general, again, that is same with the fish, with the male staff earrings, but I would say that normally you would not allow uh, any body piercing to be, to be visible, um, that including a tongue ring, because trust me, you can see it. And if you would like to, you can allow uh, women to wear one additional piece of jewelry, but it should, should always be elegant and simple and minimalistic. Um, so again, it's nothing too statementy or so it doesn't clash. In the sense of uniform shirts and trousers, normally you would allow your managers or supervisors or the people in your establishment that you'll be wearing um, suits or pantsuits. Um, to be um, black or dark blue or any really dark and neutral color. Um, very often, um, it's, uh, women are allowed to wear either skirts or trousers with their suits. In the sense of belts, um, normally, uh, with small exceptions, belts should always be uh, black with a plain buckle. Uh, but sometimes for managers, you can allow a little bit more flashy and interesting belts when they use it as an accessory, if that, of course, fits um, the concept and the color scheme of the outlet. In the sense of shoes and socks, things are pretty straightforward in most of the cases when you allow only black polishable shoes. Why is that? Why they should be polishable? Um, because this is easier to clean and in, in case that you say you spill something, it's easy to clean. While you have um, shoes such as suede or any kind of fabric, they're very, very easy, difficult to maintain clean. Um, and if something happens, you cannot clean them on the spot. So polishable shoes uh, in a black color are always the best option to me. No trainers normally, again, depends on the concept. But if you go for shoes, don't allow trainers, no matter how smart they look. Women, uh, it's good women to wear heels, even if they are small kitten heels. I know that many, maybe many women will say, oh, I cannot wear heels, but kitten heels are fine. Um, and they actually are more comfortable and it gives a better support to your back when you're spending a lot of hours on your feet. So believe it or not, kitten heels not only look better and a little bit more elegant for women, but they're actually more um, comfortable when it comes to, um, to stuff that can actually wear heels. Of course, this is not, does not apply when it comes to, as we said, staff that is very, does very labor-intensive work such as housekeeping and kitchen, and there maybe it's a better idea to get women flat and comfortable, stable shoes uh, for their work um, as their work attire. Again, no bold accessories on the shoes and socks, no crazy patterns, and, uh, and normally only plain, plain black socks are allowed, and they should always be above the ankle. In a sense of tattoos, shaving, and makeup, again, this is a topic that can vary a lot from industry to industry and establishment to establishment, but I would say that if we're taking the more um, classical and... Um, um, classical approach, then we'll have no tattoos um, uh, be allowed to be visible. And if that's the case, if, they, if your staff has tattoos on their wrists or necks or whatever, just ask them to cover it with makeup. Um, men should be clean shaven every day. Again, if you allow beard, make sure that um, the, staff, the staff's beards are well groomed and maintained before they come to work. So it doesn't look like a, I just can't be bothered to shave but if you ask, I'm growing a beard. So it's all about to look coherent and, and well-maintained. So I would say that it's always a good idea to ask your staff to wear makeup, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's a little bit of concealer and a little bit of just, just mascara and a lip gloss, it always kind of uplifts your look and it makes you a little bit more awake and a little bit more fresh. So that very much depends on, on, on you and how you want to do it, but I would always recommend a little bit of makeup, at least for the female staff. And that's the end of the presentation. I would like you um, to think about and discuss uniforms of places that you've been and gone. And um, after you know all the components that you have to consider and all the 
uh, best practices uniform standards just to think of um, uh, is uh, are those uniforms done in your opinion in a, in a good manner what would you change etc and if you have a concept that you really like what kind of a uniform you'll be designing uh, I will be having this um, presentation available for download on my website and you can always view it on SlideShare and I'll put a link below uh, as well. I hope you like that video and you find it useful. Make sure that if you do to leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot and I will see you very soon in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye from me and see you soon. Bye.